Hello and uh, welcome to Enhanced latest uh, webinar um, where today we will be covering um, remote working uh, and collaboration but really the reason that uh, we've done this webinar is because things have changed a lot over the last few months and we're finding ourselves now really in, in a bit of a hybrid model of working so we've got lots of customers that are returning to the office um, they're even changing the way they, they now um, have worked previously um, and allowing people to work from home more, work from cafes more, um, and really sort of embracing this, this sort of hybrid model. So what we thought to do, we do today is cover um, a number of areas um, around that. Now, for those of you that are new to Enhanced, um, we provide all these services, so you know, from managed services and consultancy, uh, Microsoft Cloud, security, networking, training, and uh, your sort of traditional compute and, and, and storage as well. So we are an end to end provider. We've been in business for over 25 years, um, you know, and uh, uh, it's a really exciting time to be in IT at the firewalls. So the agenda for today. Um, OK, so remote working in a hybrid office. We are going to cover where we are today, how um, organisations look today uh, in terms of, uh, as I was just saying, the uh, the, the pandemic and what it's done to business um, and how that's driven more collaboration and more need for collaboration within the business to maintain productivity levels uh, and to ensure that the business grows and goes from strength to strength. Now some of the technologies that Microsoft are using out there to uh, enhance our lives now with, with these new models of working, Microsoft Virtual Desktop, um, the ability to uh, have your own telephony system, voice over IP, all through Microsoft technology, um, and really the next generation of conferences. Um, we're seeing a lot around Zoom um, uh, and uh, Microsoft Teams, um, and Microsoft Teams and collaboration uh, leads us into another section we're going to cover today around Teams Rooms, which is really, really simple video conferencing um, that doesn't cost a lot of money, uh, really easy to implement um, and helps you make the most out of your investment in Microsoft licenses. Um, it would be remiss if we did not cover security today. Um, very, very important because, uh, you know, security over the last few months, we've seen a lot of hacking attacks um, with people very hurriedly moving into remote working in a hybrid model and not really being that concerned uh, at the security uh, complexities that that's brought about. So over the next few slides, we're going to be discussing where did we transition to remote working over the past few months and how this has now become the hybrid office working environment that we're now living in. So over the past five months, all businesses have been on a journey with remote working solutions. So initially we were looking at providing our users remote access to our files and data um, and applications, whether that be through traditional VPN connections, looking at existing RDS deployments or Citrix, and also utilizing cloud storage such as OneDrive. AV conferencing has been critical in providing both a well-being state and also making sure that we're collaborating with our existing teams. Um, so whether that be through Microsoft Teams or Skype for Business or for some businesses, it's been utilizing Zoom, which has had its own security concerns over the past few months. And finally, it's looking at collaborative working platforms. Everyone's been banging on about digital transformation, and these are the products that sit at the key of that, uh, whether that be Microsoft Teams or for early adopters, Slack. And overarching all of this is security, whether we've deployed things like multi-factor authentication alongside conditional access, looking at identity and access management, and also data protection and information protection of the data that we're held in these cloud storage accounts or remotely accessing. So the hybrid office, what is the hybrid office and how do we bridge the gap? So we've now got our office and our remote workers as two discrete entities. The glue for this is collaboration, but how do we enable that? So as discussed previously, video conferencing is at the key of this, whether we're utilizing, say, Microsoft Teams for that, we're getting conferencing, IM, and tele potentially telephony with Microsoft Business Voice. Document collaboration, which is based on SharePoint, is built into Teams and all the other Microsoft products and enables co-editing, co-authoring of documents and also accessibility for individual teams. 
Um, task management is critical as well. So assigning tasks to people within the business that you would traditionally just go over to their desk and mention that particular task. Actually, we need a function to provide that. Um, and Microsoft Planner is, is the task management solution within Office 365. And well-being is critical now that we've got a predominantly remote workforce or users working from home, say, three days a week and coming into the office two days a week. And how do we uh, embrace that as a business through both Teams and through Yammer? So a number of businesses found themselves in a position several months ago where the devices that they had given to users weren't really applicable for this hybrid office method, traditional desktops, for instance. With the current situation, therefore, how do we provide the right devices to our users? Um, and devices as a service can offer that. Um, rather than it just being a traditional release of hardware and putting that on a finance package, devices as a service can include uh, a bundled set of uh, services alongside that, whether it be patch management, infantry monitoring, as well as the compliance and remote wiping of those devices. Um, faulty hardware, again, traditionally you'd have to look at putting support packages in place there with another third party. Actually, do we just wrap that into that monthly cost for the device and all these services again? So putting in that break fix clause into that hardware itself. Um, again, that ties into being lost and stolen devices. We can ensure those devices so that they're replaced should they be lost or stolen by our users. Um, and also, what do we do after three to five years? Do we try and eke out that bit more life out of the kit? Or actually, do we look to just put it on a constant refresh cycle? Um, so the idea of end-of-life kit becomes a, a, a non-issue. So to get the most out of our tools and our remote workers, Enhance believe that adoption training is a critical investment for businesses. So we work on a four-step plan here at Enhanced. The first being a clear path. So the uptake of new technology, we find, is best in most successful when businesses look at the defined goals. What is it that the business is looking to achieve out of our technology set? So, and in our second step, it's looking at embracing the management teams within this process. It's, it's all well and good te teaching our users how to use products, but if there's not buy-in from management, they're not going to have the enthusiasm to drive this forward. And third step is the training of end users. So we believe in end user training, and that whether that be on site or remote but with a physical trainer, um, alongside the delegation of technology champions that within individual teams can push and drive collaboration. And fourth, and probably most important, is feedback, making sure that the business is continuing to encourage its users to bring feedback to make sure that this is an ever-improving process for the business. So Microsoft 365 sits at the heart of a lot of the conversations that we're going to be having today in this webinar, and are you making the most of your subscriptions? So for some of you, you may only have an Office 365 subscription, but again, I, I, I doubt it you're using all of the products on this list. So today we're going to be talking about some of these products such as Yammer and Planner and how that derives well-being within businesses, and, and may not be products that you're currently using. Within Microsoft 365 packages, you also have EMS. So this is a real game changer for the management of both devices and information protection with products such as Endpoint Manager and information protection alongside Azure Active Premium Plan 1. And finally, Windows 10. Um, so this fits alongside our conversations that we're going to have around Windows Virtual Desktop and the licensing for that. Okay, so um, one key uh, area, obviously, to bring the hybrid office uh, to life and to ensure that everyone is uh, being as productive as they can um, is how effectively they can collaborate. So we're just going to cover off a few areas of how some of the, the technologies now within the Microsoft portfolio uh, really do provide that, uh, that collaboration like never before. So Microsoft Teams... Um, in the press a lot now, obviously, because of the uh, the, the, the lockdown and um, the ability for people now to share information a lot better. Teams is really aimed at your, as, as Microsoft would say, you're in a loop. So people that you're working with regularly on core projects. So collaborating on those core projects together. Um, 
sort of outside of that loop, um, then we have um, Yammer communities. And Yammer communities really is a bit like social media, but for your corporate. So it's the sharing of ideas, um, the ability to um, give well dones to uh, you know, create a real sort of social space for, for people within an organisation, no matter where they, they are, you know, whether they're at home, whether they're working from a cafe uh, or in the office. And obviously, we still have uh, the good old uh, email and, um, you know, what people have worked out of for the past 10, 10 15 years um, and the ability to um, uh, share with email, but also bring content within Teams within Outlook and within Yammer and, and really the whole gamut of uh, Microsoft technology all into one place. The real key to productivity in the hybrid, uh, hybrid office really is um, the ability to collaborate on documents in real time um, and built on Microsoft SharePoint. Um, we have that ability. Um, it's not new, it's been around for quite a while, but bringing all this functionality into Teams within Microsoft 365 um, is, is fairly new. Um, as I said, all in real time, you're able to share ideas, um, as you can see in the video, bring people into what you're working on um, and send information between uh, members of your team, um, edit that information and seamlessly merge work together um, uh, all in one place. Um, another area of collaboration um, that's had a bit of a makeover recently uh, from Microsoft is tasks. So um, what we used to have um, was your own personal to-do tasks and um, a product uh, called Microsoft Planner, which was real integration into the Teams product um, to be able to assign people within a team um, tasks to do and carry out um, and ultimately complete. Those uh, two have now been combined. Um, and they've been brought into uh, what Microsoft now just call tasks. Um, so again, all within the Teams environment, um, the ability to share uh, tasks with people um, all across the, the Microsoft suite. Uh, lists um, has been around for some time uh, within the SharePoint world. Microsoft have now brought lists into Teams um, and, you know, probably one of Microsoft's most simple products. Lists is simply that, the ability to uh, create lists, uh, track issues around those lists um, and uh, share information with people um, and also ability to create customizable view, views and rules and alerts to keep everyone within that team uh, in sync. Very keen um, at the moment are Microsoft to ensure that workers within an organization um, are having their well-being looked after. Um, so they've done a lot of work recently on uh, enabling um, things within uh, Teams, um, within their products, to really uh, make life easier for uh, an individual. So um, one of the things they've done is looked at how uh, using conference calling, and video conference calling, um, is actually um, quite, uh, quite a burden on the, the human brain in terms of fatigue. Um, and I've done a lot of work around looking at ways of putting uh, that uh, video conference together in a view that is a lot easier on the eye and allows your brain to take it in um, uh, and uh, ultimately not feel as fatigued uh, as you would uh, looking at a screen for, for maybe a couple of hours within a conference call. And to be able to track the well-being of your uh, employees, um, reflect, um, again, a fairly new product um, within the Microsoft 365 product range um, is all about getting feedback from your employees to see how they're feeling. Um, you know, are they getting the right work-life balance? Um, you know, but also, you know, it's about productivity again and ensuring that 
the well-being of your employees is driving productivity uh, and everyone is happy within the business. So I mentioned Yammer at the start and Yammer is uh, Yammer communities is all around um, the sort of social media aspects of your organization. Um, not just your organization, you can bring other organizations into this space as well. Um, and it's about knowledge sharing. It's about employees experience, uh, experiences within the workplace. Um, and um, we use this quite extensively within Enhanced um, to quite often talk about um, contract wins, to talk about things that are going on with uh, certain uh, departments or employees, you know, like a three peak um, challenge uh, up mountains uh, uh, of the UK that we've done recently. And, um, uh, you know, a real sort of community environment for, for workers to be able to collaborate in. Hi everyone, my name's Karim. I'm the Head of Engineering and Technical Pre-Sales at Enhanced, and I'm going to give you a overview of Windows Virtual Desktop from a technical perspective, um, show you how it's architected, how you license it, and some of the reasons why we at Enhanced are a, a, a big fans of it and you know use it for ourselves and our customers. Defining the business benefits of a new technology is extremely important to a business, both from a financial and non-financial perspective. Ensuring these business benefits align with the business objectives is crucial when adopting a new technology. With Windows Virtual Desktop, Microsoft manages portions of the service on the customer's behalf. As such, this service has many built-in advanced security features, such as Reverse Connect, which reduces the risk involved with having remote desktop accessible from anywhere. One of the great benefits of WVD is how secure it can be from working fr from home or a remote setup. You can set up the environment so that no data can be downloaded or saved onto a user's desktop outside of the company control. This prevents accidental or malicious uploading of files into your organization's environment. This will further help with GDPR compliance as all data is stored in one place rather than across multiple devices. Windows Virtual Desktop also gives you standard Windows 10 desktop across all users' platforms. For the majority of users, they will already be familiar with this and using it currently. So therefore, it's a lot less time for users to have to adapt. You are not limited in the way that you are with traditional RDS or Citrix environments also, as being able to virtualize specific applications and publish them to only users who need them means licensed applications such as the Adobe Professional can be used on the environment under the existing license terms you may have without the need of having to upgrade for every user who is accessing the platform. This is a big shift from traditional RDS and Citrix environments, as in those cases, these spe specialist applications would need to be licensed for every single user using the environment. Using native features to WVD like Autostale can dramatically reduce the cost as the environment will scale up and down as users log in and out of the system, which means no running up bills over the evenings, weekends or holidays when the system is not in use. Also, if you look at it from the perspective that now everything is in Azure, you no longer need to install or upgrade any servers on premise. So any costs of maintenance or upgrades every few years are dramatically reduced and even in some cases eradicated completely. The modern expectation when working remotely now, now, especially in this COVID-19 culture, is that users want to be able to access all their applications that they can when they're in the office. This has been traditionally a problem with native RDS environments and Citrix environments. The biggest issue is this, is the way that the user profiles work. It takes Login times can be really slow and take a really long time. With the introduction of FS Logic profile containers, you're able to consistently maintain user text, minimize sign in times, and have a native local profile experience. So it eliminates many of the compatibility issues with the solutions we previously mentioned, like the Citrix and RDS. It does this 
by storing it into Office 365 and this is included within your Office 365 subscription. WVD offers you as well a Windows 10 multi-session environment. Therefore, you don't need to run a server OS to have users logging in. So as we mentioned previously, they can log into the familiar surroundings of Windows 10, navigate around as they normally would as if it were their local machine. You can also set per machine applications. Now what this means is the traditional applications that are very difficult to work in a uh, RDS or WVD environment, such as OneDrive and Microsoft Teams, have been redeveloped from the ground up to work specifically in Windows Virtual Desktop. These versions are stored within local users profile containers. This was unheard of before the introduction of FS Logics containers and has been designed as a core piece of technology to allow a seamless working environment for end users. So now we're going to move on to look at the architecture of uh, Windows Virtual Desktop. So this diagram shows a typical architectural setup of Windows Virtual Desktop and how all the elements work. So if we start from the left hand side of the diagram, you will see that the application endpoints reside in your on premise network. Now this can be done through your office at home combination of both. It doesn't really matter, but it's the on premise element that's key here. You can use a service such as Azure Express Route, and this will extend that on premise network into the Azure cloud to give dedicated bandwidth and throughput if required. Then it will use AD Connect to integrate with your Active Directory environment, either through Azure AD or Azure Active Directory domain services. In the center, we see the elements that are managed by Microsoft. So this is the what we what is known as the Windows Virtual Desktop Control Plane. This handles web access, gateway, broker, diagnostics, and it has the um, extension capability components such as REST APIs. This is all managed by Microsoft, and there's no need to worry about spinning up any of this or having to troubleshoot it. This is all part and parcel of the Windows Virtual Desktop service. So what do you need to manage other than your on-premise element for Windows Virtual Desktop? Well, this moves nicely onto the desktop subnet. So if you have a look at that, you'll see all your, your VMs there. So essentially what you're managing is you're managing the end clients that users are logging on to. So these are known as host pools and workspaces. The other elements that you'll need to manage is the virtual networking in Azure, the Azure AD su subscriptions, um, and either Azure Active Directory domain services or Azure AD. These are fundamental components and Windows Virtual Desktop cannot be used without it. The other element you, you can look at is what where you're going to store your data. So traditionally, these would be local to the machine. But as we spoke about with FS Logics profile containers, this is now contained within the Office 365 subscription. As such, you can use the standard Azure file storage for this, or you can look at augmenting this service and getting better performance with a technology such as Azure NetApp files, which is fully certified by Microsoft. With media optimization for Microsoft Teams, the Windows desktop client handles audio and video locally for Teams calls and meetings. Enabling device redirection is not required when using Teams with media optimization. Another added benefit within WVD is that you can customize different host pools RDS, RDP properties and create separate pools for things such as multi-monitor experience or enabling microphone and audio redirection, letting you deliver an optimal experience for users based on their actual needs. Universal Print is a modern print solution in Azure that can be used to manage your print infrastructure through cloud services provided by Microsoft. When deployed with Universal Print compatible printers, it doesn't require any 
on-premise infrastructure. Universal Print provides a centralized print management through the Universal Print Portal, which is integrated with Azure AD and it supports single sign-on. Universal Print can be deployed with non-compatible printers by using Universal Print Connector software. Licensing. This is a key consideration for businesses when deciding which type of technology they're going to they're going to deploy to provide their users with a remote working environment. In traditional Citrix and RDS environments, you license through RDS cows. These are typically done per user. So every time a new user is added, they need to have a new RDS cow. However, with Windows Virtual Desktop, what Microsoft have done is with any of the Office 365 subscription SKUs you see on the screen, these are included. Therefore, there is no need for additional RDS cows per user or per device. This makes it a much more cost effective and attractive solution to businesses. Finally, before I uh, wrap up, I want to introduce you to a new piece of technology that we've recently started looking at. This is NetApp Virtual Desktop Service. And this essentially makes provisioning, automation and management for Windows Virtual Desktop really easy. It's a really use useful solution um, and it really complements Windows Virtual Desktop very well. For us, we're finding this is becoming a very popular option with our customers now, simply because you can eliminate the complexity of some of the WVD deploy deployments. Uh, NetApp removes the barrier of PowerShell expertise by providing a simple um, GUI interface to deploy, manage and maintain your WVD environment. Uh, NetApp Virtual Desktop Service simply funnels hundreds of WVD setup options into a few key questions. And from that, you can build out your own custom environment. It allows you to create and orchestrate all the required components such as host pools, session servers for multi-user Windows 10 and server, server 2016 and 2019, should you want to do that, and app groups that define user access to the desktops and applications. This can all be achieved within minutes. The big key for us is the ongoing management and administration of the environment. Um, and this is where this product steps into its own. It allows for users and groups to be added without the need of running additional PowerShell commands. It allows for session management capabilities such as shadowing, control, disconnection, and sign off all through a GUI. So some of our customers that we have will love this service because they would want to manage it themselves, but they may not be able to because it was all PowerShell based. But with this additional service on, on top, they have one pane of glass, they can log in, manage it, see everything that's going on and really have feel like they have control over their environment. So this works really well for our for, for us and some of our customers. The final thing it's worth mentioning about this is this is currently the only available management slash deployment tool for WVD that is fully integrated and certified into Microsoft Azure, meaning that it has to meet all the same security requirements of the Azure platform, such as ISO 27001, ITAR, SOC, GCloud, GDPR, to name but a few. Well, that concludes my part today and I'm uh, grateful for your time and I'll be handing back over to Jeff and Lewis now, but thank you very much. One key area um, of collaboration obviously is voice, telephony, conference calling, video calling. Um, and uh, Microsoft uh, have uh, again done a, a lot of um, development in terms of their, their offering around uh, telephony and voice over the last few years. Um, so what we see uh, in the uh, workplace at the moment is lots of customers coming to us that 
are still on um, traditional PBX phone systems. They're utilizing very costly ISDN lines um, for their telephony. They're um, maybe wrapped up into a very high cost maintenance uh, contract for Tenefli um, that really is now out of date. Um, so one of the, the, the key drivers for, for moving to voice over IP or a Microsoft business voice over IP solution um, is uh, this uh, the fact that ISDN lines um, you know, are, are, are now old, te old costly technology that, that uh, are fast disappearing. So um, voice over IP, uh, replacing the traditional phone system, um, and really making it a lot less complicated uh, than it has been in the past. So, um, you know, the ability to be able to utilize um, your internet connectivity to make voice calls, um, you know, really is a, a game changer for lots of organizations. So the business benefits, um, Unified Comms comes with, of course, voice and calling, um, but also the ability to implement chat um, within that. Um, and you start to get into a position where you're no longer tied to a single device. So you can start to utilize your business voice uh, functionality over your iPhone, over your Android phone, over your tablet, um, but also the ability to have handsets uh, in the office if you need them or headsets. Um, the biggest thing about voice that held it back for a number of years was the reliability of a network. Um, Great to say now in the modern age, we have very redundant, very highly available networks um, with 99.9% .9 uptime guarantees from Microsoft um, because of all the uh, development and investment that they put into their back end infrastructure in their data centers across the world. Um, these data centers, of course, are built on the highest security uh, and the highest compliance uh, requirements. So voice really is in good hands. Um, I mentioned it's simpler, simpler than the old traditional phone systems. Um, it integrates with all your Microsoft uh, applications, so you can literally call out from, uh, from Teams. Um, and you can also use call controls and location-based routing so that uh, um, you can actually ensure that you're paying the right tariffs at the right time from the right device, etc. cetera. Um, and going back to costs, obviously, no initial cost to set up, updates and maintenance charges um, do apply um, in terms of utilizing what we call SIP trunks, which is your IP connectivity um, out of your organization. Um, BT's uh, 21st century networks are now all run on IP telephony. Um, so at some point, even from a traditional phone system, you're breaking out over uh, uh, an IP system. Um, this is utilizing your, your IP connectivity uh, to use voice solutions. You might hear about direct routing um, when people talk about Microsoft Business Voice. So direct uh, routing uh, essentially is um, a huge benefit for, for organizations um, to provide Microsoft Business Voice um, through um, a number of telephony providers um, which you can then sign up for, for specific call plans. Now, Microsoft call plans have traditionally been very expensive. People have shied away from the Microsoft call plans because of their costs. But the great news is that you have the ability to use third party plans. Um, and even recently, uh, literally in the last month or so, Microsoft have shelved um, plans to uh, change their, their, uh, their Microsoft call plans. Um, because the marketplace really is very, very competitive in terms of the costs for uh, voice plans over IP now. Um, as I said, this is all about providing voice from your Microsoft 365, your Office 365 environment and Teams, and this is all built into your Microsoft 365 uh, subscriptions. So, as well, I say it's built in, so really the hub here is Teams. Everything is driven from Teams. So within Microsoft Teams, you get access to all your contacts, all your history, voicemail is included. Um, your phone number um, display is here in terms of dial pads, the ability to dial from contact lists, the ability to dial new numbers. 
um, and uh, and essentially access um, you know anybody's uh, business card essentially within the Microsoft environment. Um, it has um, some fairly basic uh, voice capabilities in terms of sophistication of voice telephone systems. So you, you can do things like um, call forwarding. You can have groups um, call rounds in terms of users, which is uh, a functionality that's come in the last couple of years on, on Microsoft Voice. So um, really as a, a standard phone system, um, Microsoft Business Voice gives you or gives an organization everything uh, that they really need now. In terms of devices, um, we're currently in a, a bit of a transition phase where a number of devices um, have to be accredited for use with Microsoft Business Voice and Teams Voice. Um, we are, as we said right at the beginning of today, are a Yealink uh, partner. Um, we provide a lot of Yealink devices in terms of conference phones, video phones, um, color ones, black and white ones, fairly simple ones, um, to give you that functionality from desk phone through to headset. Um, that is changing. Microsoft are opening that up so that, uh, uh, in effect, even cheaper uh, models of phone um, can be used uh, going forward. And um, really, we're sort of looking at watch this space to, to see when that's going to be available. So from a licensing point of view, as I said, probably on Office 365 already, um, really what you need to do is just add Microsoft Business Voice in terms of subscription. Um, add a calling plan, so probably not a Microsoft calling plan, as I said, because they're too expensive, um, but a third party calling plan, again, that Enhance can, can help you out with. Um, and also look at uh, direct routing for uh, your voice connectivity. Again, all can be um, handled by uh, the Enhance uh, voice team. Thanks, Jeff. And now I'm going to be covering off Microsoft Teams Rooms, which interlinks with Microsoft Business Voice that Jeff just covered. So Microsoft Teams Rooms being the video conferencing solution that Microsoft have worked with a number of third parties to produce. So conference room solutions have kind of traditionally failed and have not been a huge uptake, principally around kind of three main aspects. The first being cost. So traditionally, Video conferencing solutions have been quite expensive to both install and also incur large annual subscription charges. So secondly, the complexities involved around them. So typically these are proprietary systems for each vendor, for instance, Polycom, etc. Um, and the functionality is dependent on that hardware vendor and not the platform holder, potentially, if you're using a third party product. So the third main issue is functionality. So tying in again with that proprietary nature of the traditional system, integration with third party conferencing solutions such as Teams or Zoom, etc., have incurred quite large charges with having to use a third party product to make that step between your hardware vendor and those solutions. So how does Microsoft Teams rooms differ from traditional video conferencing solutions? Well, the first thing, it's really cost effective. Traditional video conferencing solutions from Polycom and other big players have traditionally been in the tens of thousands of pounds for a solid setup for a good sized boardroom. Microsoft Teams rooms, the price on those units is kind of circa four, three to four thousand pounds for the hardware, which includes PC cameras and all your speaker phones, and then a display to go along with that, as well as a small round setup from ourselves. The other thing with Teams Rooms, it's super simple. There's no complexities around it. So anyone that's bought into the Microsoft ecosystem and Microsoft Teams, it works the same way as you would expect it to. So within the Teams Room system on your boardroom table, you would have a touchscreen hub. That's linked up to the, your calendar for that particular room. So if you create a Teams Room conference for your room within your office, you'll have an auto join function straight on the device as you walk into the room. If you're using it in a more impromptu way and you just wanna come into a room, share some content on the screen and have an impromptu meeting, simple again, you can either wirelessly connect to the unit to display stuff on the screen or connect via USB-C or HDMI. In addition to that, we can add impromptu users, whether that be from our company remote users on Teams, other companies that are using Teams, or via, via dial-in functionality. This also connects to Microsoft Business Voice as well. 
Productivity is greatly enhanced by solutions like this, especially when we're looking at the hybrid office. The, fact, the simple fact that our teams that are working both in office and remotely can join in in a single room. So if we've got three or four people that are in our boardroom, which typically we'd have 10 or 12, we can have the rest of our remote team join in via a large display in the room. In addition to that, people can dial in, as, as I said previously, or we can drop customers into those calls. Finally, it's an actively developed solution from Microsoft. New functionality is being constantly dropped into the solution and Microsoft basically create all the software for these solutions. So third parties such as Yealink, Polycom, Creston um, are basically providing you with a generic Windows 10 PC, their proprietary webcams and microphone solutions, and then Microsoft are providing a Windows 10 IoT image with a specially designed version of Windows Teams rooms for that software. So if there's any updates or changes to the system over time, they're just rolled out at a software level and your old hardware will continue to work. Traditional systems, additional functionality has been additional hardware purchases over time. This is completely gone with this solution. So Microsoft has thought about how we can kind of get around those concerns of the traditional video conferencing solution. So Microsoft Teams Room is a standard that they've set out to their vendors and follow some key principles and particular requirements around the solution. So to utilize the system, it's all around simplicity. So we can basically create a meeting from our Outlook calendar by selecting as a Teams meeting and inviting the unit, which will be tied to a room, so no need to have to invite a particular user for that. That will then deploy your meeting on the hub that you can see there. So simply you can sit down, go to our hub and then join that meeting with one click. That brings everyone into our video conference. Um, the no, next key functionality is around the ability to add participants on the fly as well. So we can do that with external dialing or dialing conferencing. So we can use it as a phone system alongside the business voice. Sharing content is easy. You can either do it with a hardware cable via HDMI to the hub, or we can use wireless technology as well to share that content within the meeting. So again, it's all around that idea of making it as simple as possible for the user. You can just come into the meeting room and use it to the best of your ability. So if we look at the desk here, this is showing kind of the main principal aspects of the system. So you've got the webcam, which you can see on the right hand side of this particular thing, and they're usually PT, PM, PWT cameras. You've got your hub on the desk, and then you'll have a Windows 10 IoT PC that you would hide behind the screen, um, which is running an image by Microsoft themselves. So it does its normal update patching um, and is managed by Intune. Um, and then you've got a selection of microphones to go alongside that. So in addition to the system that you've seen there, Microsoft have now started releasing what's known as the content camera. So the content camera is to basically provide traditional whiteboards that are in your room and bring them into the meeting. So quite often in the video conference, you're just seeing what's in people in the room and not what's going on at the front of your room. So the content camera, as you can see here, is now zoomed into that whiteboard, brought that into full view, and now actually brought that person's in front of it, semi-transparent, so you can actually see the content at all times while she's writing on that board. So at the moment, Microsoft have authorised two cameras for this, um, Logitech cameras that are only 100, 200 pounds, so quite cheap to add on to a system, but great functionality for those that use a traditional whiteboard within their meeting rooms. So as with our IP telephony uh, with Business Voice, we work with Yealink. Um, they have a number of Teams room systems that have all been signed off by Microsoft, ranging from kind of two users all the way up to 30. So as you can see, what, as I've discussed before, all of these systems come with that hub, the PC, and then the only difference is gonna be around your cameras and microphones and making sure that you've got the right hardware for the size of that room. So the first two systems are around say, those small collaborative spaces, whether you have a microphone on your desk. So this is a speaker phone alongside a traditional camera or a speaker bar um, style solution with the camera and microphone array integrated within that. 
The other systems kind of with the larger sizes will have a zoom camera alongside a multiple mic arrays on your table. So the licensing for Microsoft Teams rooms, Microsoft actually made really very easy. So they sell a meeting room license, which comes with all the core functionality you need to run this. So your Teams license, the phone system license, the audio conferencing dial-in license and Intune to manage that device. So the only thing you're gonna to have to add on is your calling plans. A big part of um, everything that uh, we do today um, in terms of uh, data, uh, in terms of collaboration, um, obviously is IT security. Now, uh, while we've uh, been on lockdown um, and uh, since the start of the coronavirus, uh, pandemic, um, security has become even more of a major concern for lots of organizations with lots more hacking attempts um, and certainly Office 365 accounts being targeted um, by hackers um, to gain data, information, credentials, etc. So it's very important that uh, we, we take a, a look at the security aspects of all the, the stuff that we're talking about today. So, um, you know, as I said, remote working security uh, has really added a layer um, of complexity for organizations to deal with. Um, and uh, lots of organizations had to jump very quickly into remote working, um, not really having planned it in the first place, um, and uh, found themselves in, in a situation where, um, you know, maybe they uh, are now more vulnerable than they were when everything was uh, enclosed in the organization. So um, really key part of, of uh, maintaining security for your remote and, and, and work anywhere users um, is uh, a security uh, virtual private network connectivity back to their data, back to their services. Um, and what we can then do um, built into the Microsoft 365 products are add a number of layers um, to that security. So encryption, uh, multi-factor authentication where you need um, a device and a, a code to be able to access um, uh, either uh, access into your network or access into your data um, or services. So really we've got to understand the risks um, as, a, as a first stage. Um, and, and, and the real risk here really is uh, the increased risk of, of, of data leakage. Um, you've now got people out there that are accessing data from anywhere um, outside of the organization um, and you know you really need to ensure that that data is protected um, and uh, you know it, it is safe um, and uh, as I mentioned VPN connectivity is, is also uh, crucial to this to be able to secure uh, the connectivity of those users. So once you've understood the risks um, we need to then implement some of these uh, solutions to protect the organization and, and its data um, so I mentioned multi-factor authentication, um, so that could be a key fob with a, 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 a number that um, cycles uh, every 60 seconds, which allows you in, uh, in uh, with regards to access. That could be passwordless access, so um, again, just a device that you tap on your, um, a, a small mobile device that you tap on your mobile device to give you access uh, in. Um, and utilizing uh, built-in uh, security la layers such as Microsoft Authenticator, which again comes with Microsoft 365 as part of the product, um, and conditional access, which checks for who the user says they are, where the user says they're actually um, gaining access from, what device they're coming in from. So really, um, as, it, as it says on the tin, putting conditional um, conditions against each individual uh, user's, um, uh, what they're doing within the system. Um, we often get asked this in terms of security, is, is, is it really uh, you know, a, a must that our users understand where these threats are coming from? And, and uh, yes, it is, absolutely. They need to know, um, you know that they shouldn't use a corporate device at home um, as a family device and, you, and, you know, and let children um, access all sorts of websites on it. Um, at the end of the day, it's a corporate device and it should be treated as such. Um, but lots of organizations are, are now doing bring your own device, BYOD. Um, and if that is something that the organization wants to look at, there are again ways of uh, securing these devices 
um, against uh, malware and specific phishing attacks, etc. But training your users to understand the risks is, is key. Um, and once all this is implemented, um, really, it's not just about understanding your security posture at the beginning of this journey. It's about understanding it at all points during the journey. So we need to be monitoring where um, data is being accessed for. And we need to be ensuring that users are as secure as they can be, um, you know, on a minute by minute basis. And Microsoft, uh, again, has all this, built, this ability built into its products. Uh, within Microsoft 365 um, and uh, solutions like SecureScore, for instance, where you can actually um, see where your level of, of, of security posture is at, at any one point. So, um, you know, great to implement these solutions, but we must understand the security concerns and mitigate against those as, as part of uh, any solution.